I have read some of Penrose's book and many others on this subject and have some of my own conclusions on this. Quantum effects don't need to survive any longer that they need to. When they collapse, that is the moment when a human decision is made. That is, the process of making a decision is based on the result of millions, if not billions of quantum collapses all at around the same time. When humans make a decision, i.e. searching for or trying to remember something, the answer is only one of millions of possible ones. Mathematically, it is the result of a probability calculation that supplies the answer. The human has memories which provides for the options. But it is the interaction of the many synapses that is the location and cause of the quantum collapsing. The axons and dendrites that connect to the neurons are used for communicating, and when a decision process has started the communication, along those axons and dendrites, happens across the brain along many paths in many places in parallel. That is, most of the cortex is put to use to come to the decision. It is this parallel processing ongoing that gives rise to quantum entanglement of some individual atoms. Entanglement is not just limited to subatomic particles like electrons and photons. It can also occur with larger systems, including atoms. If a mechanism is small enough, it will only result in quantum effects. That is, the forces, electromagnetism, and masses involved are so small that only individual atoms are affected. In the brain, this is what happens. The communication, decision-making, is so small and subtle that it results in quantum effects. There is nothing specifically special about that. We have replicated quantum entanglement in the lab. A feedback loop is generated which gives rise to an ever-largening signal. The largest signal wins. That is the final decision, answer, the human takes. The microtubule is where the feedback signal is generated. Consciousness. Consciousness is the brain's ability to see itself. Precisely because the brain is slow in communicating across itself, there is an echo of any given thought that is observable to the next thought. In this way, there can be self-referencing. Because quantum decision-making is faster than synapse communication this gives rise to the existence of the echoes. So, in order to make a conscious machine, you would need quantum decision making to occur in its processor. And yes, a quantum computer would be conscious if there was also a parallel synaptic system, just as there is in the brain. You have to have both for consciousness. Humanity needs to build a quantum computer that is programmable, but not conscious otherwise we would have built a brain that processes at the same speed as a human brain. Not terribly useful given there are already many billions of humans on Earth. Imagine spending billions or more building the first quantum computer and having the first conversation with it to discover it is just a brain like ours, albeit conscious, with no special ability to calculate faster than us. An artificial conscious brain would be useful for sending into space for long missions. Building a quantum artificial brain. UFOs house alien versions of artificial conscious brains. You can observe the flight paths of UFOs as irregular unplanned movements, rather like you would move your eye when searching for something across a landscape. The paths, trajectories of UFOs are not mechanical. A quantum computer brain could be housed in any material that looks and behaves like a human brain. That is with neurons, synapses, axons, dendrite-like structures of the same size and complexity. A material like an organic crystal would suffice for this. That is, the crystal would be artificially created and then grown in a lab according to requirements. Examining the processing part of a UFO, there was found only solid gray-looking metal with no parts connecting or power seemingly needed. It is this gray metal that was the conscious brain. That gray metal was grown by the aliens. Some alien races, therefore, have machines that are alive. Anti-gravity. A network of conscious mechanical, crystal, brains would be able to solve many complex and impossible problems perhaps even generate matter by thinking about it. What better way is there to solve a problem by thinking about your problem and it builds, creates, a device that performs what you want? 
It might be the case that the existence of a large and or networked conscious mechanical brain would give rise to the control of anti-gravitational effects. That is, gravity is a byproduct of thinking. The quantum collapsing in decision-making gives rise to small gravitational effects. With a brain large enough, these gravitational effects could, just as in a microtubule, give rise to a feedback loop, which gives rise to an ever larger gravitational effect until it becomes so large that it starts to become detectable to us. A quantum computer such as this would solve our current endeavor to build a sustainable tokamak. So, not only would we have artificial consciousness, quantum computing, control over gravity, but also endless energy. So, humanity must continue to attempt to build a scalable quantum computer. Alien races have, of course, already achieved all of this millions of years ago. We are so technically inferior to them, we are not interesting to them. They simply not interested in saying hello to us.